Good evening. Uh, once again, this is Richard Taylor. I am here with Mr. James Hennett. Uh, he's a concerned citizen uh, about some activities and occurrences that's been going on at Dillard Middle School in Goldsboro, North Carolina. Uh, if you saw our video uh, early on in the month, uh, we talked about some of the issues that the students and the staff have had uh, with the current principal, Mr. Mario Ray. And the most recent and egregious incident is the uh, arrest of a 12-year-old student, I'll say her name, Mrs. Trinity Boyette, okay. uh, for allegedly chewing gum uh, in, in the hallways. A uh, brief overview of the incident, uh, she was uh, told by Mr. Ray to not enter her class. She entered the class anyway. Uh, he told everybody to get out of the class right. and was reprimanding uh, the 12 year old girl so much that she ran upstairs to a bathroom. I refused to come out of the bathroom. Uh, the the de-escalation officer or uh, the de-escalation person, uh, Miss Jaleesa Harris, uh, tried to intervene in the situation, but Mr. Ray refused to let her intervene uh, because the student knew her and had a relationship with her. Instead, he called the school resource officer which ended up uh, arresting uh, the 12-year-old girl uh, and charging her with various charges. And now she's engrossed in a legal battle, a 12-year-old student, uh, for doing something that every child probably does at school at one point, chew gum or eat candy. Uh, so this is just one of the incidents. Mr. Hennett has been involved uh, with uh, some happenings at the school for uh, probably about two years now. Yeah. He, he has shown me a lot of documentation where he sent uh, to the school board. Uh, he sent some to the, the Board of Education. Uh, he sent letters to uh, Washington, D.C., uh, the Department of Health and Human Services about the food. Uh, sent letters to the White House, Joe Biden. Uh, sent letters to the juvenile court counselor, uh, dealing with this case, uh, Mrs. Uh, Travia Freeman, as well as um, the ACLU. Uh, and he's actually um, in the midst of filing a civil rights complaint. Now, just a couple of incidents that he has um, addressed. Uh, he wrote this letter concerning these things right here. Now, these are pictures of the food. I, can, I don't think you can see this, but if you see right there, uh, you see insects in the food. This was taken last year. Uh, as well as you see on this food, there's mold in the food. And this apple right here has mold as well. And there's more mold in the food. Now, the actual students wrote a letter uh, concerning uh, these, these issues. I think this is uh, right here. Right here. Yes. So the actual students, now this is a letter from the actual students addressing these issues. As far as the food goes, only one healthy meal, salads one time a week. About the buses uh, being uh, in critical conditions, she said that the seats fall when the buses hit the brakes, overpack kids. Um, the girls' bathroom, they lack two sinks in the, in the laboratory as well as um, no hot water, uh, and also uh, the food. Now, um, the students said that they have stated the concern with the principal, Mario Ray, about the food, and he laughed it off like it was a joke right. and disregarding the, the uh, situation. Other students have complained about the neglect of the school and the charge of maintenance. Now, this is written by... Um, Denisha Cogdell and Alanoff Alea Aluna. These are students right here uh, complaining about um, the food. And this was in February of this year. So this is not something that is um, a long time ago. This is recent. Um, as well as um, there has been letters sent to the school board about Mr. Ray's treatment of Teachers, uh, an exchange student, Mr. Chumbambi, who's African descent, uh, once told Mr. Ray that he would go back and get some papers, and Mr. Ray told him, uh, what are you going to do? You're going to run barefoot? 
And, um, you know, once again, that that is a offhand racial, racial comment. Absolutely. Uh, as well as um, he told uh, Mr. Chambabi after he was uh, wearing the suit, he asked him, hey, what happened? Did you spend all of your money, you know, to buy the suits? Uh, once again, insinuating that, you know, uh, Mr. Chambabi, Ch Chambabi was strapped for finance. Now, he did not, Mr. Chambabi did not want to file a complaint because right. he didn't want to lose his sponsorship right. as an exchange teacher. So these are the things that um, Mr. Ray has been accused of, searching uh, the children's bag, um, actually wanting to change the school colors from gold and blue uh, to red for a tiger. Um, the school has been cited and fined $1,500 for not keeping the school up to code. The school has... Uh, mold and mildew um and tondaleo clark thanks to tondaleo clark she reported these issues in april and june of 2022 which has still yet to be resolved and so um these are just some issues and, and there's much more issues that have been going on at this school um but the major the major issue is once again uh, the incident with Mrs. Uh, the 12 year old Trinity Boyette. Now, so if anybody knows Mrs. Boyette family, we actually called uh, Miss Freeman today, and because of uh, it's a juvenile situation, they would not give us any information concerning uh, the the whereabouts or uh, where the case is now. So uh, we're trying to um, contact her mother as well as other other school teachers and, and, and concerned citizens about how to get involved with this because um, the juvenile system is supposed to be on the side of the juvenile, but um, there I'm pretty sure that there is no uh, recompense for her against this, this, this principal because they're going to say the principal, of course, was right. So uh, we're asking, uh, and, and Mr. Henn is asking people to get involved. He got myself involved, and we're, going, we're trying to do this video so that you know we can bring attention uh to the matter so what are, what are you asking or what do you want people to to do or how can people get involved with the situation they get involved by notifying the justice department aclu petitioning uh this superintendent's office state superintendent's office organize mobilize to come out protest Stand up for this child. She desperate, desperately needs our support. Just imagine if this had happened to your child. I'm going to go back and sort to reframe these issues. This child came to school ready to take her in integrated tests. Just like any other happy-go-lucky child. Chewing gum, ready to go to class. She was approached by Principal Ray and told her to spit out her gun. She knew the conduct of this man. She knew that she did not want to be confrontational with him. So she avoided him at all costs, went into the classroom and sat at her desk. He came into the classroom, ordered all the students and the teachers out of the classroom across the hall to another room. And just the two of them were left in that room alone. Now imagine a child, sixth grade, a grown man isolated with her in the classroom where she knew his behavior pattern. The students across the hall could hear this child screaming and yelling. He's screaming and yelling at her. She managed to get away from him. Ran down the hall and up the stairs to the 8th grade girl's bathroom. He was in pursuit of her and ran upstairs yelling and screaming again at the door of the girl's bathroom. Miss Harris tried to do everything that she could to try to squill, quell the situation. She asked I know her. I can talk with her. The principal denied her that opportunity. A situation that could have been de-escalated 
was escalated by him. After he finally left, the child came out of the ladies' bathroom. She was told at that time to go downstairs and that her mother would meet her there. Upon her arrival at the, at the office, there was three police officers waiting. And at that point, she was arrested. Principal Ray escalated the whole situation. And he'd been doing so the whole entire year. Searching children book bags. Having them to stand on red markings in the hallway. Screaming and yelling at them on constantly. Daily. And when this was brought to the attention of the superintendent, they ignored it. We're going to continue to fight for this child. We're going to continue to fight for justice. We're going to continue to make sure that people like Principal Ray cannot come into our community, defame our children, disrespect them, treat them like second and third class citizens, because we've had enough. The problem that I have today is that our children or treat it like they don't have any values at all. And it's time for us to step up, embrace our children, protect them, and making sure that they're put in a, an environment that is conducive to learning. Right now, they're in an environment equivalent to a concentration camp. And I blame every parent or guardian who do not get involved and find out what is going on with their child. We have the power. And if we don't exercise that power, today is the children, tomorrow it could be you. You have any more questions for me? Um, no, I just <laughs> want to reiterate what you're saying because um, according to this, the school has a rating of F. Absolutely. Um, and I don't know what those ratings come from, but I have been, you know, I've heard some of the things that, you know, Mr. Hennett uh, has uh, said. They have been corroborated uh, by Ms. Delisa Harris, which I hope to speak with. Uh, actually, it's funny, Ms. Tondaleo Clark was just calling me during the video, so we're going to uh, be talking with her and hopefully get her. She's retired now, so she doesn't have right. any any state to lose for speaking out about these issues, Absolutely. which I understand a lot of teachers and administrators, people um, fail to speak out for fear of retaliation or retribution or right. and, and people's livelihoods are on the line, which right. I understand. But, you know, nevertheless, if, if, if we don't stand for any, nothing, we're going to fall for anything. And as Malcolm X said, you know, only a fool will let uh, his sworn enemies educate their children. So, uh, evidently, uh, like Mr. Uh, Hennett said, this guy is running this school like a conscience, concentration uh, yeah. uh, camp. Ms. Jaleesa Harris said that he's known to be confrontational yes. with the students. Uh, this right. is in her document as right. well. So, uh, this is not something that we're just making up uh, against Mr. Ray. These are actual documented and witness facts. So, uh, we're asking everyone to get involved. If you know uh, Mrs. Trinity Boyette and you know of the situation, feel free to call me directly, 919-587-7782, or Mr. Hennett, right. if he wants to give you his number as well. Right. Um, I would like to elaborate on something else. The whole time this situation occurred with the sixth grader, there was teachers standing there. Not one of them, with the exception of Ms. Harris, attempted to quell the situation. That's how much control that this man has over teachers and students. We, can, uh, we cannot allow this to continue. I'm just thinking right Good now... Good evening, everyone. The time is on 515, and the computers have automatically shut down. We will close in 15 minutes at 530. If you need assistance, please come up front. We'd be glad to help you. I'm concerned about the incoming school year. A whole sixth grade class watched their classmate be ridiculed, harassed, belittled in their presence. Just think about how they feel going back into this school 
this school year as seventh graders facing the same person that perpetuated this crime. There's no way they're going to be happy to go back into that institution. We have to make sure that they're okay. So I'm asking everybody within Goldsboro, Wayne County, to pay attention to what's going on in the inner city schools. Our tax dollars are funding these schools. This is a Wayne County public school. It's in our community. And if we don't take care of it, nobody else will. I always believe that this is by design. To keep our children from excelling. That's one less person that the establishment have to contend with. As a person that was born and raised here in a segregated society, I excel despite of, despite the hatred, the bigotry. I managed to do things to help my mother, grandmother, my younger sisters and brothers. And these children have the same opportunity if we just simply support them. We cannot let this situation be swept under the rug. They have covered this up right on until this point. But they will not silence, silence me. I will continue to speak out. I will continue to galvanize people. And we're going to make sure the Trinity get her justice. Thank you. And thank y'all for tuning in. We're going to be coming back with more concerning this issue. So hopefully we'll have Ms. Clark and also Ms. Harris to kind of give you more insight. But once again, this is a problem at a school that is in our community with our children affecting our children. Ability to learn, ability to be productive citizens. Most importantly, we don't have, want our children having criminal records at the age of 12 uh, for coming to school. So thank y'all. God bless y'all. Y'all have a bless. And thank you also, Mr. Henry, for thank you. alerting thank me to this situation. We're definitely going to keep uh, pressing going towards this. Peace and blessings. Y'all have a good okay. day.